God some praise in here. He's worthy to be praised today. And I just, I'm so grateful for this invitation. Thank you so much, Chris. I, I do not take this lightly, and I, I just pray that you open your hearts to this song and give God your total praise today.
God. Come on, God deserves a much better praise than what you're giving him right now. To God be the glory for the things he has done. Can you help me celebrate the singing gift of this angelic voice of Miss Carolyn Wright. Come on, we can do better than that. She blessed us. Wow, what a tremendous gift. What a tremendous talent in the body of Christ. And we thank God for her booking manager, her husband, Brother Wright, being here. Thank God for his presence as well. Thank God for this master of music ministry, media ministry. Thank you so, so very much to all of our preachers, to our officers and deacons, to you, our sisters and brothers. If you're able to stand, please stand for the reading, reverence, and respect for the Word of God. I did have a hymn in mind, but uh, Sister Carolyn has <laughs> taken everything I wanted to do today. I may do it after the message. It may go over a little bit better. Amen. Book of Michael, Michael chapter 2. The context of our sermon will take place between verses 1 through 13. For the sake of time, I just want to read verse 1 to you. Michael chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. And when you have it and see it, say amen. amen. Verse 1 says, whoa, that's enough. Amen. God bless you. Actually, I want to tag the text with the subject, enough. Enough. This is the language when you've reached that boiling point, when you reach that breaking point, when you get to the point where you just can't take no more. Children know what it means when a parent says, enough. Spouses know what it means when spouse says, enough. Employee understand what it means when an employer says, enough. What it means to say I've had enough. That I've reached that boiling point. I've reached my max. You done got on my reserve nerve now. So enough is enough. I think our nation hit that point when George Floyd was literally lynched right before our eyes. Where the nation, the world says, enough. Yes, even God gets to a point where God says, enough. I've had enough with your foolishness. I've had enough of putting up with you. And yes, grace has an expiration date. Mercy has an expiration date. The long suffering of God has an expiration date. Yeah. And God will say, enough. God will say, I've had enough of dealing with you. And all of us need to be aware that God is putting up with us. That's why every chance you get, you ought to give him the best you got. Because he's putting up with you. If you didn't wake up this morning, this world would have just rolled right on. God don't need you. God don't have to have you. As good and as talented as you are, God has somebody else that he can do and you 
in your place and in your position. God has somebody in the third grade that can do what you're doing right now. But while you have the chance and while you have the opportunity, you want to do the best you can while you can. Because God will say enough. God will reach that breaking point. The problem is the enemy has convinced us that we've gotten by with living like we live. In a place of complacency, prosperity, and peace, and pleasure. And we feel like we've gotten by. We feel like we've gotten away. But our sins, our iniquity, our transgression is not going unnoticed by God. God will say, I don't have... Just about all I can take. Just about all I can stand with you. And some of us has taken God to that breaking point. But God has to break us. We didn't appreciate the blessing. God will try to change our heart and mind by blessing us. But if blessing don't work, guess what else he'll use? He will use the breaking. And somebody knows something about being broken. Matter of fact, you're here this morning because you know something about the breaking. You, you, you know what it means when God puts you in position and circumstances where he has to mold and shape you and put you in places you never thought you would be. How many know something about being in a predicament that you never thought you would be in. Our text, found, our text brings us to a minor prophet by the name of Michael. Michael means our, there's nobody like our God. Nobody like the Lord. He ministered during the time of 725 B.C. He speaks to uh, the Israel tribe and the Judah tribe, and he exposes their sins and their transgression. He speaks to their injustice, not to mention that they have violated the laws of God, but they've also violated the laws against humanity. When you read the Ten Commandments, the first four commandments deals with our relationship towards God. But the last six of the ten deals with our relationship with one another. And you have people who say they have a relationship with God, but don't have any relationship with people. You know what the epistle John says about that person? That they are a lie and the truth ain't in. That when you have people that walk in church and won't speak to people and get up in church lifting hands and shouting and dancing, John says that's a lie of that. Matter of fact, next time you have somebody walk past you and don't speak and they got all that Holy Ghost, and praising God. Just step up to him and say liar. Because the truth of the matter is that when you have a relationship with God, you will have a relationship with people. As much as people get on your nerve, as much as people have used and abused you, there's something in you that won't give up on humanity because you've got some deity in you. I wish I had about eight of y'all who've got some God in you. Where my folks at in here who got some real God in you and it won't let you give up on humanity. The Honorable John Lewis, it said, 
to be one that never gave up on humanity. That he believed that one day this nation would rise up to its creed and constitution. He believed that there's something good within humanity. And when you have the power of deity working in you, it will cause you to see the good more than the bad. I know I am right. And so Michael is called to minister to a people who have not only violated God's law, but they have violated against humanity. Few points here and I'll get out of your way and bid you happy Sunday. Couple of things here in verses 1 through 5 where God says, I've had enough. You got to keep your Bibles open, Carl. You'll see I ain't making it up. And it'll bless you real good. He speaks of how they're moving and how they are operating. Look at verse 1. Woe to them that devise iniquity. Work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hands. God says, I've had enough with workers of iniquity. That while you are sleeping, there are some wicked people who are plotting and planning. That's why you need God, y'all. Because you can't watch your back. You don't know what's in the hearts of people. Some of us got some friends and some frenemies. Frenemies are those people who act like your friend, but they ain't really your friend. And I need God to watch me. I need God to cover me. I need God to protect me because there are some workers of iniquity. But I'm glad there will be a day when the weary will be at rest. When the wicked shall cease from troubling. These workers of iniquity, you will never outdo them or beat. You can't outlie a liar. You can't outstab a backstab. That's what they do. That's who they are. You ain't like that. You love, you give, you share, but you can't outdo people who are cunning, who are deceptive, who have devices and methods in which they're trying to manipulate. You need the power of God to cover and protect and keep you. The Lord says, I've had enough of these workers of iniquity. What else does God say I've had enough of? Verses 6 through 8. God says, I've had enough of words of the false prophets. I ain't making it up. Look at verse 6. Prophecy. Prophesy ye not, and say they to them that prophesy, that they shall not prophesy to them that shall not take shame. Verse 11 speaks of they give what they, what people want to hear. That's why you need a pastor. You, You need to be connected with a church with a pastor that's preaching the word. Because when you go on YouTube and Facebook, you just scroll down to your favorite pastor, to your favorite speaker. And if they're not saying what you want them to say, you can click out of that and go somewhere else. So you can get a word that you like 
and that you want to hear. But the problem with that, getting what you want all the time ain't always what you need. When I go to Big Mama house, Big Mama didn't have no McDonald's. Big Mama may have some beans, some greens, some squash, and a whole lot of other stuff I didn't want to eat. But Big Mama knew if I was going to grow and be healthy, there was some nutrition and vitamins that I needed that McDonald's didn't give me. And aren't you glad you go to New Hope? Because y'all don't get Mickey D's. Y'all ain't getting Wendy's here. You're getting the full counsel of God. You getting stuff that you want to hear and you getting stuff that you don't want to hear. I see you with your arms folded. I got the urchins on lockdown. They lock the doors. You can't leave now. You got to stay up in here and hear this message. All oh, bless the Lord. Praise his holy name. False prophets who feed the people what they want to hear. Tell them they're doing good when they're not doing good. Lying to the people. Tell the truth about God's word. We just can't hover over prosperity. Because there's more to the gospel than prosperity. I can't lie and tell y'all, y'all bring me $20, you won't get Corona, you won't get in no trouble. God going to bless you with 200 if you give 20. I can't tell you that. Because I don't know that. I do know God will bless our obedience. And I don't know how he going to do that. But I know he will. And I do know all your blessings don't come with paper. Paper money I'm talking about. All your, all your blessings ain't in your pocketbook or your checkbook. There's some blessings called peace. There's some blessings called joy. There's some blessings called health. I wish I had some help in here. All my blessings ain't on me. All my blessings ain't in my bank account. I've got something that money can't buy. Can I give y'all one I had just last night? Sleep, y'all. I slept all night long. So much so that when my alarm clock went off, I hit a snooze button, bro, Lynch. Because my sleep was so good. I want you to know money can't buy that, y'all. Only God will allow you to lay down and rest at night. Won't he do it? I said, won't he do it? Yeah. Oh, bless his name. Not only workers of iniquity. I'm almost done. Words of false prophets. But then watch this, y'all. Women and children being abused. Is in verse 9. The women of people have ye cast out from their pleasant house. If you want to know the strength, the power, the spirit of a nation, watch how they treat the weak. Watch how they treat the helpless. People that can't help themselves. It's nothing to help people who can help you. That's where most folks are because we know something about reciprocation. That I scratch your back, you scratch mine. And some people won't help because they know there is no reciprocity. But 
the true test is when you bless people that can't bless you. That's when you know you delivered. When you can give a blessing and ain't looking for nothing in return. I know I got about 10 of y'all that know something about blessing people. And when you give it, you through with it. Whether you get something or not, you are right with it because God put it on your heart. And all through the scripture, the scripture is consistent with the treatment of women, children, orphans, and widows. Matter of fact, when they came out of Egypt, one of the laws in Leviticus was when you glean your fields, that was meaning during harvest time, when you're taking in your crop, save some corners for the poor, for some women, for some children. Bless somebody. Stop talking about how blessed you are. That ain't about nothing. If you're not being a blessing, God bless you so you can bless somebody else. You know why my cup running over? So somebody else can get the overflow. I know I am right. And all my blessings ain't going to come to me. Some of my blessings going to show up at my sons and my grandsons. And my great-great-grandson. And some of y'all are the product of a praying grandmama. Grandmama didn't get what you had. Granddaddy didn't get what you got now. But you are the product of their prayers. You are the product of their faith. You are the product of their trust in God. Oh, bless his name. Well, y'all... God says I have enough of workers of iniquity. I have enough of the word of the false prophet. I have enough of how y'all have done and treated women and children. We leave here. It's all death, destruction, and doom. But aren't you glad God's Last word ain't destruction, ain't doom and gloom. As bad as we have been, last word should be destruction, doom, and gloom. I told him at 8 o'clock, I never write a sermon to shout, folks. Especially in my older years. But I, I, I feel a shout coming on when I think about I should have been dead. Ought to have been dead. Would have been dead. But God's last word wasn't destruction. God's last word is hope. Let me give you just a little bit of hope and we're out of here, y'all. Y'all with me? Verse 12. We got two more verses. Y'all stay with me here. Verse 12, the hope shows up. Now, it's only a remnant that's going to be saved. Everybody will not be saved. Only a few is going to survive. According to Michael here in that day and time. Only a remnant will be saved. Lord says, I'm going to be a shepherd. I'm going to lead you. I'm going to be a shepherd to you. Somebody know he's a mighty good shepherd. Because he'll make me lie down in green pasture. He'll lead me 
beside still water. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk in the valley in tough days and tough times, I shall fear no evil. How come? Because thou art with me. Thou rod and thou staff. They comfort me. Thou prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He says, I'm going to lead them. I'm going to be a shepherd for them. But not only will he be a shepherd, look at verse 13. I'm going to be a breaker. I'm going to break the bondage. I'm going to break the things that are holding you back. I'm going to set you free. Somebody in the modern church would shout glory. Hallelujah. Since I laid my burden now, I feel better. So much better. Since I lay my burden down, because God has broken the chains that were holding me down. Addiction was a chain, child molestation was a chain, divorce was a chain, toxic relationship was a chain. But when the Lord sets you free, I ought to have a witness here. I got any free worshipers in the house. No more change holding me. I, I, I don't apologize for the way I worship. And the way I preach, because you don't know what bondage I was in. You don't know how the change held me down. But now, 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 now I am a free worshiper. I can worship in spirit and in truth. Is there anybody in this house who can worship in spirit and in truth? Come on, help me worship our God since he has set us free. We owe him some worship. I, I don't know what bondage you are in. Let me see if I can come down your street. Somebody was in the bondage of depression. Somebody had loneliness. Somebody had joylessness. Somebody was restless in your spirit. Somebody had low self-esteem. Somebody was wounded in your spirit. Somebody had an unforgiving spirit in your life. But aren't you glad those things are not holding you? God, I said God has set you free. And since he set you free, come on, raise up. Send the praise up. Let's give him the best praise you got. I don't know how you praise him. 
Some of y'all praise him with a clapping of the hands. Some of y'all praise him with lifting up your voice. Some of y'all praise him with the waving of your hand. Some of y'all praise him by dancing. But I want to tell you, I want to give him my whole body, my whole self. Praise him with your hands. Praise him with your feet. Praise him on the music. Praise him with your voice. Because can't, can't nobody, I said can't nobody do you like the Lord. Hey, hey. I'm, I'm having flashbacks. I'm seeing where I was to where I am right now. Can we take a praise break and give him some praise and worship? Because he could have said long time ago when you were in Foosville, enough with you. But I'm glad he gave me another chance with this chance. I, 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 I want to give him the best I got. If there ain't anybody that feel like I do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But when I think of his goodness and all, oh, 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 bless his name. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. text it closes by the Lord says I will go before you as a leader as a shepherd he breaks the chains he breaks us out of bondage then he leads us and he goes before and this been in my spirit all week song that speaks of lead me guide me along the way for if you lead me I cannot stray Lord lead me oh Lord let me walk each day with thee Lead me, oh Lord, lead me.